till I arrived at the chemist and was confronted with a new man. He wasn't particularly thrilling, he had a nice face, he was reading. But as I approached the counter, I noticed something quite discombobulating. There was a red paper heart cut out and stuck to the top of the Vicks nasal spray display console, and for the life of me, I couldn't place it. Why had he made, started making such dramatic changes? He'd only been with us since we lost the ashes back in January, according to Mrs. Coyle. Why was he doing this? Oh, I said eventually, is that left over from Valentine's Day? Perhaps you were doing a promotion on Zoobs and forgot to remove it. Oh no, he said. Oh no, said Benoit Sabon, who was wearing a name badge, had his name written on it. Oh no, and he was holding a test tube. Oh no, no, we don't do promotional displays here. Well, I was relieved and I laughed. I didn't think so. We like our pharmacies impartial. Valentine's Day, though, honestly. My husband, Fred, thinks it's a big manufacturer's con. What would you want with a shop-bought card for, anyway? Oh, what a sensible man, he said. Yeah, I felt pleased. But it's nice to buy your lady love a card anyway. Oh, is it, I said? Well, that's nice. And of course, it's nice to receive one. Is it? Well, I wouldn't know. But you see, it is my heart. I made it absent-mindedly, I suppose. It's to promote a survey I'm doing, and also it's doubling as a bookmark. It's been quite quiet this afternoon. Really? A bookmark, you say? What are you reading? I'm studying the science of love. <laughs> I'm sorry for the science of love. And I threw back my head and I laughed and I laughed. The science of love, Bon, will say Bon. Honestly, you couldn't make it up, the science of love. Don't be so ridiculous. It's not ridiculous at all. It's really very simple. What is it that love does to us? How does it affect our bodies and brains, scientifically speaking? Well, don't ask me, I said. I haven't got a clue. Well, your eyes are dilated. Sorry? I'm not wearing my glasses. Well, that's a sign. But it's the chemistry that interests me. Go on. Well, you see, the act of falling in love uh, releases certain chemicals into the cerebellum. Oxytocin, a hormone which signals strong sexual arousal and releases emotional tenderness. Then there's dopamine, which promotes a feeling of immense well-being. Oxytocin and dopamine? Yes. And then there's endorphins, the body's natural painkillers. Endorphins, I said. Yes, and uh, norepinephrine. Norepinephrine. As he spoke, my heart began fizzing like a steroid in a glass. I was beginning to see what all the fuss was about. His chemist's eyes were like two blue Pifco foot spas. Norepinephrine, yes, it releases the body's natural adrenaline. And then last but by no means least, phenylethylamine, which releases a natural feeling of euphoria. Phenylethylamine, you said that very well. I didn't think you would. No. Well, no, people can get quite tense as the words get longer and longer. And then I realized, he shrugs slightly, his bottom lip sticking out. <coughs> He was French, the Gaul of the Gaul. He was conducting a survey, the science of love, and I was a surveyee. I should have to move to Paris and learn to play guitar. I'd have to sit outside a Parisian cafe all day watching a goat going up and down a stepladder whilst drinking Parisian tea. A Lipton tea bag on the side of some lukewarm water with a little jug of steamed milk nearby. And then in the evenings I'd have to take part in this love survey. I didn't know what his next move would be. And then he spoke and I panicked. Would you like to go out for dinner? Oh, no, I said. I only came in for Gaviscon. Fred's got wind. <laughs> then that'll be two ninety nine. And I paid for the Gaviscon and one of those lip balms they always leave near the counter and so very tempting, and I ran. I ran and I ran back to Fred. That night, as I sat under my candlewick bedspread, I knew all about who love was. He wasn't cutting out romantic shapes and collecting data on locals who needed psoriasis cream. He was in my front room, making a military latrine out of a Castel cigar box, and due to bed in the early hours. The next morning, I, I mentioned it to Fred. I thought I'd better come clean. Oh, Fred, there's a new man in the chemist. Really? Well, yes, it's terribly funny, but he's French. Is he? What makes you think that? Well, his name badge, it says Benor Sibone. Benor Sibone? More like Benor Sabane. That's a new over-the-counter laxative. What else made you think he was French? <laughs> oh, well, he did ask me to go for dinner with him. Yes, well, he asked me too. It's a raffle for sciatica support. What else made you think he was French? Well, the, well you can just tell, can't you? And then Fred confounded me completely by doing this. <laughs> <laughs> What's this been meant to be again? Uh, a science. Oh, yes, I think that's covered it. Right. Um, so, so, I'm, I'm, sorry, I'm, I'm sorry about this. I just must mention, um, the musical interludes you were doing just then you were a little bit off-putting. I wasn't expecting them. Uh, sorry, I'm a bit discombobulated. Um, you are invaluable to me, Martin, but you're also a novice, so... Do you know that when Fred and I started this show all those years ago, we were actually approached by the BBBBC. Um, some of these routines are tried and tested from that time, and uh, I'm actually wearing the same jacket I wore 20 years ago at the premiere at the Theatre Royal, so you can do a sting there if you like, Martin. <laughs>
Oh, nice one. So still to come, we have a man from the Territorial Army who explains how to surrender effectively, a lecture on wassailing, bless you, and our popular Spot the Hernia competition. Do you like a tissue? Yeah. So, uh, Professor Martin, just, uh, what is your real name, Centre Party Martin? Oh, I prefer to remain anonymous. Oh, I say, the mystique of the musician, eh? Hey? The mystery of the wandering poet. Perhaps you have a famous father. Why won't you tell us your real name, Martin? I'm signing on. <laughs> okay, so coming up next, now, I was going to talk to you now about some jumble sale artefacts that Fred and I bought from the Village Hall. Is that all right? Let's have a look, Sarah. First of all, I'm going to show you this. Now, back in Toxborough Village Hall, um, I'm very interested in picking up bits and bobs. Uh, I actually found a very interesting book about how to get rid of clutter. But I can't find it because it's under piles of jumble. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist. Um, so anyway, when Fred and I were first married, we actually used to go to Toxborough Village Hall um, to pick up bits and bobs to furnish our home because we spent every last penny on our first house, down to the last halfpenny. There were halfpennies in those days. And uh, by the time we'd furnished our house, we had nothing left for furniture. So we used to fill it with things from the jumble. I remember Fred once carried a chiffonier all the way up the road and I followed close behind with a standard lamp light bulb. And another time we bought a bad set cabinet and in the cupboard was this. It's a little piece of modelling paper for making a model, and Fred thought that it was too small for an embankment and too bright for, for, for a valley, so we decided to keep it for display purposes only, so that's what I'd share that, that with you there. So uh, when Fred got that, really, it was a lifetime hobby was born. So. Now, um, I'd like now, if I may, to be serious for a moment. It's very easy when you're sitting at home in your cosy living room, nibbling an Aldi pikelet, to forget just how fragile is the thread that holds the things we hold so dear in place. So I'd like now, if I may, to sing a song about a difficult time which is now past. Thank you. Most, childbirth or losing of love. 
I did enjoy our song then. Did you enjoy our song? I hope you did. Yeah. Yes, well, thank you. Thank you so much. I know it's most discombobulating to be here. I, I know it is for everybody, really. But uh, Martin, did you enjoy doing the song? Yes. Yeah. Oh, I'm glad. I'm glad. Do you know, I took up singing quite late in life, really. When Fred um, was made redundant from the switchboard, I had more time on my hands because he pitched in at home. And so I was able to undergo some evening classes at the Village Hall, including burlesque for beginners, <laughs> rap music, street dance, <laughs> and Colour Me Confident, where you learn what colour the suits you best. I'm actually a, a warm winter and angry. And also we did acting, which was very thrilling. We learned how to sit down on a chair without looking at it, whilst lighting yourself with a candle. So, very satisfying. Oh. Thank you for that, Martin. You used to be in a tribute band, didn't you? Oh, so I, yes, I used to be uh, Jimmy Pretendry. It's where we're going to spend anywhere. It's waiting. It's blocking up. Quick, you play something else, please. Sorry about that. And the wind cries. Mary! I have to clap along to that bit, but um, unfortunately I clap on the on beat, and it should be the off beat, and musicians get furious, so we're not going to do that. Now, uh, back to my things from the jumble sale. I'm sorry about sharing these with you, but I, I, do, I really do um, love the things I found. Um, Fred and I rather enjoyed the thrill of jumble sailing, even after we'd filled our home with the things we needed and the children had all grown up. Um, and so I became mad about stationery and bought things that weren't that necessary. I'd head, head straight for bric a brac. You have to have a plan when you go to it. Come in, do come in and take a seat. There's one right here. I won't pick on you later, I promise. Uh, hello, come sit down, that's fine. Um, so I, I bought a, a little box of um, bits uh, from the jumble sale. And uh, I don't know if anyone knows what this is. It's actually a, can you see this? Yes, what is this? It, it helps a tablecloth stay on a table. Oh, lovely, thank you. That's perfect. That's just what I needed. Sorry about that. That's going to, have to, that's going to be much better, isn't it? Oh, no, thank, you for, thank you for that, pointing that out. Um, now, and then Fred started collecting uh, useless, useless and worthless containers such as these, um, which he just found quite quite enjoyable. Um, and then after I'd attacked bric-a-brac, uh, I'd rendezvous with him at books. Now one time I got waylaid by an enormous pair of drawers and Fred actually found a fire screen which he bought for me without telling me and put it in the car and the cherry, we had a Datsun cherry at the time and he put, popped it in the car and didn't tell me all about it and when I went and saw it in the boot he told me it was a screen for me. We got it home and he showed it to me. It was quite the most hideous thing I've ever seen. And it went into the garage and it's still there. It's so exciting to be outside of Tox through, isn't it, Martin? Yes. Um, Fred and I actually once went to Hull. Is anyone familiar with Hull? We went to visit an old school friend of mine. Um, the, the local city and its harrowing paper was really quite an eye-opener, and we spent most of the day at Gay Pride. So we really let our hair down. I ended up uh, tapping my foot to the beat of a drum, and Fred uh, spent most of the day in the car with a cornetto. And by the end of the night, I had a flower in my hair. Come in, do come in. There's a seat at the back to squeeze through. Uh, hello, do come in, don't worry, just go to the back, you'll be able to catch up. Um, and, uh, hello, do come, yes. Um, yes, yeah, so, uh, I'm all thrown now. Yes, yeah, so, um, I tapped my foot, I'm just talking about gay pride in Hull. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. I was tapping my foot to the beat of samba drum, and uh, Fred spent most of the day in the car eating a cornetto. And then he insisted on driving home early after being accosted by what appeared to be most of the fire brigade. And um, I was wearing a wild and beautiful flower in my hair like a magical jippo. Um, now, you know, on the way back, Fred seemed quieter than usual, and I thought he hadn't enjoyed the exhibitionist display at all, which had sailed past for most of the day on floats. But it transpired that his reaction was actually delayed. And I was awoken rudely by Fred's own emergency hose at four in the morning when he decided to wake up while it was still dark and go out and water his nasturtiums. That's quite the, the bravest and cleverest thing I'd seen that day, and the gayest, so successful gay pride. Martin, your current wife is from Hull, isn't she? Yes, that's right. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, yes, now I remember you telling me you met her when she was having a day out in Bridlington, is that right? Yes. yes. Oh, ah, yes, of course. Well, who wouldn't want a day out in Bridlington? Golden <laughs> sand and the blue sea. Is that what took her to Bridlington, Martin? Uh, no, she was on a day out shoplifting. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, right, so uh, now what's up next? Also, oh, it's over to Fred. Oh, I'm so sorry, he's not here. Sorry. <laughs> Falls of habit. The next one isn't Fred at all. I'm terribly sorry. Um, so now it's Fred's section, which is called How To. And um, it's going to be me instead. Sorry about that. And it's called How To Get To Robertsbridge. 
Go out of the door and head down the one-way system towards the Curfail Tunnel. When you get to the roundabout, go straight across and veer up towards past the garage. Then take a slight fork in the road towards Glind. Carry on past the allotments and it's about 12 miles on from there. Maybe 25. That bit did work, Martin. You were right. Well done. I was saying the, uh, in the words of Kirsty Allsop, we were inspired. Inspired. Please don't join in. Now, um, in the early days of this show, when it was still a quiz with unwanted jumblers prizes, uh, we had a, a little thing go a bit sour one, val- one uh, April Fool's Day when Fred appeared to win all of the main prizes himself. I know, it didn't go down very well at all. We had a, a Spanish student staying with us at the time, and uh, he was really quite furious about it. He was a very competitive little little man, uh, uh, mi, mi los uh, que And, um, I mean, really, it was hardly worth complaining to the agency about, but, um, and, and also all of the things that Fred won, he could have got in his local corner shop because they were all from Spain anyway, so never mind. Um, so anyway, Fred had to make some changes, and we got rid of the quiz and started doing talks instead and talent spots. So, um, and Fred introduced his new game called What's My Five?, and we also had a live game of Bop It. So, if anyone doesn't know what Bop It is, it's very annoying. And now some of the um, unwanted jumble that we couldn't get rid of was then used by our local production company, the Gaiety Players, and uh, they used it in their Who Done It, the unwanted jumble. And I remember uh, one production at Christmas, the uh, stage lights came up and the set lit up, and the lady in front of me said quite loudly, those are the curtains I donated, and it really did make the murder less fascinating, especially as the corpse sat bolt upright looking a bit annoyed. Okay, so still to come, we have um, Fun with New Buck, a short talk entitled Lip Reading for Malicious Purposes, and an interview with a tinker. But first, Martin is going to regale us all with a romantic poem. Are you a romantic man, Martin? Oh, uh, yes, yes. Oh, well, of course, well, you're newlywed, aren't you? Yeah, well, you're still every year, yes. Oh, well, yeah, yes. Well, don't, don't tell me. Uh, paper, isn't it? Anyone had a paper anniversary? No? Yes, yes, nodding shyly. What did you get? Do you remember? A love letter or something boring. <laughs> yes. Um, well, no, no, don't tell me what you... Uh, did you get... Because you're musical. Was it a sheet music of your love song you shared? Or perhaps a poem you're about to read? Or maybe a drawing of a rocker? What did you get for your wife's <laughs> paper anniversary, Martin? Uh, a solitary towel. <laughs> OK, well, I don't think we've got time for your poem, Martin. Thank you for that. Now, it's time for the first interview of our show. Sting, please, Martin. That's quite a nice one. So I first met this person when he produced the live music for our local production of the Mark Bolan story, uh, Star Jump to Tree Stump. <laughs> Tension was very high as we all went in for the uh, uh, castings and the auditions at the Village Hall. And in the end, the lead role, bless you, of Mark Bolan went to Mrs. Petrie, the director's wife. So for my first interview, I'm going to interview Centre Martin Martin. Please give him a hand. <laughs> Thank you, Martin. Now, uh, name... The centre party, Martin. Yes, of course. And why? Oh, well, I've always been a centre party. Yes, I just about see it. And um, where do you originate? <laughs> oh, Yorkshire. Yorkshire, I say. And where did we first meet? Secondary school. That's mm. right, in the fourth year. Wasn't it? Do you remember when someone new started at school in the middle of the school? It was quite thrilling, wasn't it? They were quite exotic creatures, <laughs> a prince from a foreign land. Nobody could understand a word they were saying. Where were you from, Martin, at that time? Yorkshire. Yorkshire. Yes, Yorkshire. Yes, yes, sorry. Um, <laughs> do you, what was it like growing up in Yorkshire as the son of a brass band conductor? <laughs> when you were working down the pit, did you find that the brass band offered you a wonderful reprieve from the humdrum life? And then a woman came and joined the band, and everyone was quite suspicious of her. And it was suspected that she was going to close down the mine. And then you realised that no, the mine was already going to be closed, and the decision had been reached two years earlier. By that time, you were a love interest, Martin. It's exactly how it was growing up. Yes. I knew it. Isn't it exciting? <laughs> Hearing all about people's lives like that. I, I did actually once interview somebody before. It was a voiceover artist. She was off the telly. Uh, Deirdre Cannon. Do anyone know her? No? But she did a voiceover, and she told me all about the voiceover and how to say it. It, it went like this. It's not makeup. It's just great-looking skin. <laughs> it's fun, isn't it? Um, except you're not allowed to use your own voice for a voiceover. You have to sound younger than you are. So close your eyes. It's not makeup. It's just great-looking skin. Thank you. I wouldn't forget. Um, so yes, that, so that was the. Uh, oh now, um, next question. Sorry, have you ever been on a coach away day? Yes, the Bruges. Yes. The Bruges. Yes. Fred and I went on the same trip. I remember now. Uh, yes, we arrived at about. 12 noon, and by half past, I was like a native, eating chocolate, standing under a carved Bruges bear, watching a parade going around the square. It really was a typical day abroad, really. And, and then I remember that Fred, craning his neck so he could form an opinion on the twerking float, 
slipped on a molten square of chocolate and banged his groin against a Bruges bear, dislocated his pelvis. So he had to be cut out of his shorts. But that's not a story for now, that's for another time. So, uh, so ma thank you, Martin, for um, regaling us with your tales and bringing it back to life with such clarity, taking us back there to Bruges as if we were there visiting ourselves. That was lovely. So please give a round of applause for Centre Park Martin. Thank you. Reading the round of applause is really for me as a sort of encouragement because I don't like the interviews at all. Um, so, and, and that section was brought to us by Centre Park and Martin's private sponsor. If you find yourself on it, some audience Facebook fun now with a new section that we've not tried before. We really do need to be competing with Facebook, so I thought I'd give this a go. So um, I'm going to now ask um, this young lady in the yellow cardigan um, to find out which food and drink presenter are you? So it's just a few simple questions, and we don't have very long, so if you get stuck, I'll, I'll just make them up by looking at you. So um, here goes. Question one. How would you describe your personality type? Pleasant, saturnine, rambunctious, or flighty? Um, rambunctious. Question two. Do you prefer food, drink, food and drink, or neither food and drink? Food. Question three. Which food and drink presenter do you most closely relate to? Oh, okay. Jamie Oliver. Um, um, yeah, Jamie Oliver. I can tell about the yellow cardigan. Um, question uh, four. Um, if you were a wine, would you be a cheeky red with base notes of spice and blackcurrant, a wordly rosé with poise but also baggage, and or sorry, a white with fallen arches, high blood pressure, and no friends? Rosé. Rosé. Oh, don't be so silly. Um, question five. How many roads must a man walk down before you can call him a man? Two, seven, or fourteen? Okay. Um, question six. You're walking through the desert when you see a tortoise trapped on its back. You know you should flip it over, but you don't. Why not? Um, I'm hungry. Hungry. Good. Very quick, thank you for that. And um, question seven. Is the number 846 possible or necessary? Um, it's necessary, thank you. Question eight. There's only four more, three more. Um, are there any circumstances in which one should hurry a murray mint? <laughs> uh, question nine, who's zooming who? I'm just going to point out that Fred wrote all these. I know I'm frowning inwardly, just like you are in actual life. Who's zooming who? Question mark, exclamation mark. And last question is, how high is a Chinaman? <laughs> okay, let's have a look at the data. So, oh yes, I see that you're... There we go. You're Chris Kelly on the cusp of Michael Barry with Julie Gould and Rising, apparently. So uh, I thought that section was three out of five. Now, so we've had a little sideways glance at Britpop and uh, uh, Bruges and your uh, food and drink preferences. And so now it's time to have a little sideways glance at technology. Now, I don't know about you, but every new year, I feel a little bad about myself. I look back on all the year gone by and think of all the things I was meant to do and didn't. And think ahead and ruminate on all the things I should be doing but won't, like try pulled pork, move the graying flannels to the emergency drawer, and uh, stop being a technophobe. So I'd like to tell you all about it by reading to you from my notebook. But it crashed and I lost the file. I know. I didn't know what that was either. So I'm going to explain. Now, a couple of Christmases ago, I asked Fred for um, the biography of Dame May Whitty and also How to Be a Woman by Kathleen Moran, because it's never too late to learn, apparently. And I thought it would set me up for the future. But I was in for a big and futuristic surprise of a different kind when Fred bought them for me on a Kindle Fire. We're all struck, I promptly knitted it, a mohair bookmark and matching med bed jacket. Now, on his first outing, I took my Kindle Fire on a long train journey, and when I opened it up, the screen was all black, so I tried tippy-tapping on it, and I did the little s switch there, and, and pressed the button, and nothing happened. And so I tried talking to it, because I've seen Mrs. Henderson next door talking to the Google, saying, where can I buy cannabis seeds? I've got back trouble. And it finds them for her. I wasn't saying that on the train. I was saying, uh, I'd like to read my book. Are you there? Hello? Uh, take up where we left off. Very nice. And, um, I think it was page 34 or maybe 10%. I, I'm, I'm going to have to look when, I, when you start. I'm, I'm afraid I can't really speak up because I'm in the quiet carriage. And then the man opposite told me the battery had died. So that's technology. Um, next time we're going to be looking at Fred's uh, first lol. 
I go viral in a good way, and we look at chat rooms versus summer houses. So that's the end of that bit, is it? The end? Oh, yes. And if you want to uh, go onto Twitter and be modern, use the hashtag the end, is it? I think it is, is it? And everyone will know exactly what's going on. <laughs> Thank you. And um, that section was brought to us by the uh, Infinity Foods of Brighton. <laughs> Cooperative rice at an uncooperative price. Everyone sing along now. Cooperative rice. It's quite cathartic. At an uncooperative price or guilt inducing, depending on whether or not you work at Infinity Foods and where you stand on the price of rice. So now it's um, it's Fred's bit. Now it's Fred. Um, so let's do the next section. Come in, do come in. There's a chair at the back. Creep in, creep in. Hello. Oh. Can you sneak through? Oh, it's somebody that Martin works with, I think. Uh, causing <laughs> havoc, wreaking havoc. Come, come in. You could sort of sit on the edge of the stage, I suppose. There's a little chair at the back. So anyway, now we've reached Fred's bit. Um, so this is Fred's speech here now. So he's creeping through the room there, stealing the show just by. Walking, no, I'm joking, it's fine. <laughs> I can interview in a minute to punish you. Now, um, if, like me, you wish to, attempt, uh, to, to escape the aching void of the centre of your life, I'm being Fred now, but you wouldn't know, you haven't seen him. Um, if, like me, you'd like to attempt to escape the aching void at the centre of your lives, you might like to try and go to the flicks. It's so expensive these days, isn't it? And that's without the popcorn. So what we like to do is relax at home with a DVD. Um, all our DVDs are bought from a man uh, at the William IV pub with a sports bag and a money belt. Sometimes they're <laughs> subtitled, sometimes they're in black and white, one time they're in purple and yellow. And another time it looked distinctly like the tripod was set up at the Duke of York's, and then the shadow of Mrs. Bettison actually got up in the middle of it and went off to powder her nose. So this is our DVD re reviews, and first up it's me with Interstellar. Has anyone seen Interstellar? Yes, okay, so you'll know what I'm talking about. Now, this is about, for those of you who haven't seen it, it's an, about a journey um, to, through space to find an idyllic world for humanity to settle on. Um, well, if you ask me, an idyllic world would be like uh, Lewis with the climate of Yeovilton in early July. And instead of chuggers on the high street, uh, it would be the cast of the Oneidan line. Um, anyway, it all got terribly complicated after that. And what I thought was an important plot point at the start of the film turned out to be an advert for Vodafone. So four stars out of ten. Uh, next up, it's Boy Next Door. And now, um, has anyone seen Boy Next Door? No? Um, well, well, you might want to see it after this review. I thought Jennifer Lopez was very convincing as an English teacher, a role she essayed by holding a pencil at all times and balancing a pair of glasses on the end of her nose. And then a man took his shirt off and uh, Fred turned it off, so three stars out of ten. And finally, it's uh, Fred's review of Lars von Trier's The Antichrist. While I'm a man of the world, no, by no means a prude, but this film physically sickened me. I mean, one is quite aware that one, uh, it, one's, uh, certain practices take place in life, but one has no desire to have one's face forced into an open sewer. Ten stars out of ten. <laughs> Fred. Right. Uh, now, back to the jumble sale finds. Um, now, this is an old... It actually smells delicious. It smells of quink. No, it's gone. Um, this is a, an empty bottle of ink um, full of bits and bobs that Fred and I were both keen on um, at the jumble sale. I'm sure that our hands actually touched at the same time. It's actually 30 pence, and Fred got it for our glass wedding anniversary present. Funnily enough, um, Fred and I actually met at a jumble sale, um, although we can't agree on exactly how it happened, um, as he thought our hands actually touched on a tin which was shaped like Noah's Ark, and I could have sworn blind that I was working behind the store, and I overpriced him on some beads, because really I wanted them, so I made him put them back. Anyway, um, so I, um, I did help out at the jumble sale for nearly two decades, and then of course they were usurped by eBay and car boot sales and the Antiques Roadshow, and everyone thinking that they're basically sitting on a gold mine. Anyway, um, we have very fond memories of the clutter that we found all those years ago at the jumbles, and so we've written a song about that time. Um, I hope this song might raise a smile. Um, Fred said, well, if people think that bottle of no ink in it is useless, they should get a load of this. So. <laughs> Smoked glass plates and Pyrex dishes, velveteen curtains and Fisher Price toys, doilies and coasters, Breville snack toasters, Mills and boot novels and Peter Max videos. Velcro and common rollers, 48, 50 great stories for boys, brine nylon blouses, crimpoline trousers, 
stitched with a permanent crease. Leather donkeys from Greece. With paperbacks, few master slides, dried yellow poses, hand knitted cozies, world's greatest dad mugs, and fake sheepskin moccasins, salad bowls, electric blankets, Capa di Monte and role playing dice, hat pins and sauces, Dalton Shah horses, just fifty feet. pleased in 1983 when Metallica released the album Kill Em All. It was a fantastic coincidence. I don't understand. Okay, still to come we have a woman who married herself, uh, talk about peas and the chance to win a new knitting bag. But first we're going to have a little look at BuzzFeed. Now BuzzFeed is an exciting <laughs> compilation of weird lists on the internet and this one is compiled by Mrs. Clack and it's entitled Five Local People Who Haven't Aged At All Well. You won't believe number four. Thank you, Martin. Well, Mrs. Coyle's never exactly been a beauty, but these days she looks as though her facial features have been fired from the side of a cannon into the edge of a pink cliff. Number two. Mrs. Erwitt, the vicar's wife's chin, disappeared entirely around the time that peak practice went off air. I'm not sure this is related, but then again, it might not be entirely unrelated. Three. Dr. Galbraith used to be quite dashing, but these days he looks like he has all the hair he shouldn't have in the wrong places and none of the hair he should have in the right places. He looks like a werewolf who's been given ten seconds to prepare for a court appearance using only a tube of nair and a Stanley knife. <laughs> number four. I oh know, we've got an advert break before number four. It's always the way, isn't it, ladies and gentlemen? You always have to have an advert before number four. So, Martin, have you got an advert for us? Well, you just can't be Oh, very good, thank you. Uh, next up, of course, we have Mrs. Taverner from Round the Corner, who has used so much Botox, she can only use the finger in her right hand and needs seven weeks' notice to smile or frown. Did you find that one harder to believe? Any harder than the others? I do hope you did. And finally, number five is Mrs. Wicks, the dentist's wife, who put her face into one of those search engine games where you can see which celebrity you most likely resemble. She was hoping for a match with Christian Scott Thomas, but she ended up being a 99% match for Whitby train station. Sorry. <laughs> I really did enjoy that section. Thank you, Mrs. Clack, for those. Uh, cruel but necessary. Now, it's uh, time now for our second chat show guest. Um, do you know, I once interviewed Limal. Do you know Limal? Um, Fred worked with his cousin on the switchboard and then Fred re-leaded re his fan light above the porch and then he owed us one, so that's quite thrilling. I think it was the Marl. We're getting mixed up with the Nolan sisters. Right, so uh, next I'm going to interview this lady at the front. Hello. And what's your name? Madeline. Madeline? Mm -hmm. That's a very pretty name. I'm going to write it down. Madeline. I don't think I'll forget a name as pretty as that. Sorry, it sounds like I'm chatting you up. I'm really, there's a fine line between being friendly and, uh, and gauche. Um, now, uh, uh, why are you called Madeline? Yes. Um, Was you named after someone or something, perhaps a cake? Uh, 
No, I'm being silly, I'm sorry. Just a nice name. Yes, no one's no one famous or a grandmother's name or anything like that. No. No, sorry about these questions. I have to ask the same ones I've asked him, so that's why they're so silly. And um, uh, where do you originate from? France. France. Oh, lovely. I didn't expect such an exotic answer. And now I'm not going to be able to follow up the next one. Have you ever been on a coach away day at school? Do you do coach exchanges at school in France? Uh, Maybe no. you didn't go on one. No, no. I've Actually, only at ever school, been yes, at school. At school, yes. And where would you have gone? Will it be anywhere I will have heard of? Oh, oh, yes. Oh, how wonderful to see the palace and the gardens. Yeah. Oh, how thrilling. Well, I'll have to I'll Google that later and ask you about it in the bar. Um, now, um, I was going to ask you, I was going to say, actually, I've, I've only ever been to Bruges. My grandmother put me off going on coach away days because she used to live in Coventry. Do you know Coventry, Madeline? No. You, you must try it. Okay, <laughs> and she used to go to Leeds and she put me off going. My grandmother's actually from Wales. Is anyone here from Wales? Anyone Welsh in the room? Because I was going to do an impression of her, and I'm a bit concerned. You might find it offensive. It's the only accent I can do. It's quite accurate, I promise. So anyway, this is what my grandmother used to say about her trip to Leeds. Oh, I've been five times, it gets boring. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we, it takes nine hours to get there. We stop off for salmon sandwiches. I don't like salmon. Um, and then we stop off, we have our tea, and by that time it's getting dark. So we get on the coach and get back home. Okay. That's, uh, that's that bit there. Um, now, finally, Madeline, I've got one of Fred's pop quiz questions for you. You're going to brace yourself. It's what would you do? I know. Don't worry. So, um, you see a baby falling out of a fifth-story window, but it's holding a knife, and saving it would involve parking on a double yellow line. What do you do? Well done for doing an answer at all, Madeline. That was a tall order. Well done. So, uh, so thank you for that. And now I, d I need to say to you a little telling off. You've told me far too much about you. Are you aware of identity theft? Bless you. Are you aware of identity theft? Well, I am now. Yes, well, next time you need to lie to me. Because uh, now I know all about you. And so that leads me nicely on to my little play about identity theft, which is going to be performed tonight by me, Mrs. Clack and Fred. No, it's not. It's just me. Sorry. So here we go. This is about identity theft. Remember the banks bailed out by the man all those years ago, but now once more affording massive bonuses? Well, I remember Mrs. Coyle queued overnight outside the Royal Bank of Scotland, but it was all right in the end. She was already overdrawn. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, this bit's about identity theft. I just couldn't resist doing that. So this all came out about a month ago, and I saw that our account was five pounds short. Could the bankers have anything to do with it, I wondered? No, it's been years since they needed my money, and frankly... If they, they're worth every penny, because if it were me in charge of the country's finances, I should have got us all into a terrific scrape years ago. So if they have taken my five pounds, it's probably for a good cause. Perhaps they need a new pen on a chain. Anyway, um, so I decided I'd better call the bank right away and sort it out. Finally, I got through to a man called Alan Peter, and I explained. Hello, our bank account is five pounds short, and the only thing I can find in my statement is I, I, igloo, igloo. Is that a thing? It's a direct debit. What does that mean? It'll come out every month. No! How many pens do you need? Do you really have no idea where it's come from? Well, no, I don't. Then I might have to speak to my supervisor about identity theft. Will you? You mean somebody somewhere has got my identity and she thinks she's me? Well, she won't get far. I'm wearing her only good pair of outdoor shoes. <laughs> I could imagine it now. Transitional sting. Hello, I'm Celia. What's our pin number again? You! I want my identity back. Fred's due in from the shed for a stretch of his legs, and he doesn't know how to work the hot wash. You can't be me. I'll think about it. Oh, oh Alan, Peter, what am I going to do? Hello, are you still there? I've just been talking to my supervisor. Oh, what's your name? Celia, I'm the right one. And your password? Auntie Macassar. And are you married? Happily and sensibly. To Fred, to Fred, to Fred. Oh, Fred, I wish you were here now. Me and I have such a ho-hum life. But I thought that's how we like it. What if he's found a fancy woman and he's bought her a set of stays and he's paying for it in ten instalments of five pounds, summing up to fifty pounds in total? I could hardly blame him. I wouldn't begin to know what a plate tectonic is. And I made him crumble twice last week. Oh, Fred, <laughs> I'm being silly. Oh, Fred is my rock, my hero. Can I just say Fred wrote this bit? Eventually we bumped into our identity thief and Fred would unmask our identity thief once and for all. I recognise those gloves. This bit's going to get confusing. Let's just brace ourselves. I recognise those gloves. Fred would cry. Who are you? I'm with the real Celia. That's me. The real Celia with the same gloves. Oh, careful. 
Oh, I don't understand. <laughs> Careful, Fred, she's very good. Not good enough. Oh, really? Look over there. Oh, Fred. What? Oh, now she's jumped next to me and you won't be able to tell which is which. She's lying. She's the identity thief. Kill her. Not so fast. If you are the real Celia, perhaps you'll answer one or two questions. Gladly. Number one. Who is the star of the 2001 film The Fast and the Furious? Dennis Price. Hmm, very good. But Celia would say that because you're identity thief and you'd know it. Question two. What is your greatest fear? Accidentally turning up at Asgard in a strapless top and getting executed. Oh, careful, friend, she's very good. <laughs> and my last question is, do you love me, Celia? Oh, no, never say you love them. It puts them off. Yes, yes, I do. Fred, I love you with all my heart. And then the bagman told me he couldn't fire for five pounds. And then Fred told me that he'd taken out insurance insurance. Aye, aye. Belt and braces, old girl. Oh, Fred. And the moral of that bit is check your joint bank account first with the person you share it with. <laughs> you can do a sting there if you'd like to show that it's the end of that bit. Average. Now, um, I've got this next piece called This Didn't Sell. I'm glad it's his favourite. And I think it's this little tiny Toby jug here. I was just going to uh, finish off uh, very soon with a little jumbled moment. Um, when Fred became ill, we cleared out the spare room and put quite a few of the things on eBay. And actually, it led to us meeting some very uh, interesting people. Um, we found this little item, uh, not this one, this is one that sold. It was an egg cup and looked a bit like an owl. And we took it along to Bonham's auction house. Nobody in Toxborough wanted to buy it because it wasn't part of a pair. But the man at Bonham's told us it's got BL on the base. It's actually burnt leech. And we sold it for eight um, another occasion, we sold a programme for an event we had at Toxborough Village Hall, and the man who bought the programme said that his parents had been at the event, they'd gotten married that afternoon at three o'clock, and then three and a half hours later, at half past six, they were at Toxborough Village Hall for the Tribute Bands Gala Night, for their first wedded night out. So he bought that as a sort of souvenir for his own parents. Isn't that lovely? Um, and the programme uh, listed the bands, including The Pretend Pretenders, Sham Sham 69, Ersatz Waller, uh, Xeroxy Music, and uh, Tenpole Mock Tudor. Sorry about that bit. Do you know, I, I, I'm missing Fred. I don't know, it's probably... Um, goodness knows why. I mean, it'll be about 40 seconds of me walking in the front door before he begins to annoy me. Um, I've made a list of the top three things he does to annoy me. Uh, I'm going to tell you them now. Number three is disparage garlic as a culinary ingredient while stirring it in a varnish with the wrong end of a Jamie Oliver branded spoon. Number two is hum loud and consecutively the greatest hits of the carpenters whilst painting individual eyelashes onto a 1 to 2,000 scale model of uh, Douglas Bader while spilling <laughs> enamel paint onto our poof. And top of the charts is um, pointing out that pole dark is actually an anagram of old crap whilst I'm trying very hard to concentrate on the siding scene. Um, but you know, when I'm, when I'm walking back tonight up the top there to the cheap, cheapy car park at the top, um, I would really give anything for that familiar voice of my co-host Fred to pop out of the darkness and say, we did quite well tonight, old girl. Now, for the final item, my little Toby jug. Come in, come in, you can just come in and see the finale. Hello. <laughs> you might have to sit on the edge of the stage. <laughs> That's right, come, come in and uh, open your crisps, get stuck in. <laughs> okay, so, um, as well as my uh, vast drawers of stationery, um, I actually found myself collecting anything with a nose. Um, usually attached to a face. Um, I find if it's got a nose, so I'm talking about finding things at a jumble sale. Did you pick that up immediately? I'm glad you did. Um, I, I often find that when somebody's got a face at a jumble sale, its little face sort of peeps out at you, doesn't it? Going, take me home, look after me, I'll help me. I'll be your friend. So I can't resist. I've got, I've got quite an awful collection, really. Um, a very many a time, a Staffordshire dog's been popping its head out of a lot of old bras and they ended up back at home. But, um, and anyway, so when I die, I intend to divvy up my collection of uh, ornaments with faces and stationery with all the grandchildren. I'm just trying to decide whether or not I should divide it up with materials that they're made from or decades. So, for example, one grandchild might get a set of Bakelite Scotty dogs and Parker pen from the 1930s. Another child might get some metal alloy. Uh, animals and maybe uh, maybe my uh, little paint pot holder as a, as a gift and another child might get some shell ornaments and no pens. <laughs> um, I do actually have a little ornament at home which is uh, two squirrels kissing each other and it says on the base I'm nuts over you. <laughs> Cost Fred seven pence. I don't think anyone else is going to want that. 
Uh, so now it's time to end our show. Um, now, last night, we actually ended with a sing-along, which didn't work, um, because uh, I don't know what you were playing, Martin. What was it you were playing? Yeah, ABCD. Yes, ABCD, and nobody knew any of the words. We didn't know what was happening. So, um, so we're going to now do Fred's emergency exit for the show, and he's instructed me to read this letter out from him, give you this envelope with your instructions in it, and uh, here's his letter um, for our finale. Uh, my wife Celia, that's me, is a wallflower, but tonight she will come into her own. After completing a street dance course, oh Fred, Celia is now perfectly capable of and equipped with the moves and shimmies to bring any chart-topping song to life. So here's a favourite of mine, Luca by Suzanne Vega. No one else feels that way. God, and I tell you what, it's not just a new year actually, but it's all year round. You start to feel bad about yourself, right, isn't it? You look back and you think, what's it all about? And then, then I remember the, the jumble sale on Monty Prizes and Fred's quiz and I feel good about myself again. I once interviewed Phil Oakey, is that one? Glenn Gregory! Whoever just said the mystery word, uh, you win a bun as a prize. And now all that remains is for us to say... Thank you for coming to our little show. We've had such a wonderful time. Madeleine regaled us with wonder. Just you remember if boredom you dread and laughter and fun times you seek. Do make an appointment with Celia and Fred and we'll see you at the same time next week. Thank you so much for coming and taking a chance on us. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. Good night. <laughs>